Hello, I'm Marcus, and I'm doing this episode because I've had a couple of questions on the internet. Now, the first question is, when you're in D mode and you go downhill in the ID3 first, and when you're not in adaptive cruise control, does it regen? Or does it just in keep increasing the speed, like you're in neutral or something? So that's a f one of the questions I'm going to answer. The second question is a very interesting question. Now, do I prefer autopilot on the Model 3 Tesla? That's something I've tested before, and there's a link to the video below. Or do I prefer adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist and with front assist, like on this ID3 first? My ID3 first doesn't actually come with travel assist. Now, travel assist is actually a better version of autopilot that you get on the ID3 first max but it's not available on the ID3 First or the ID3 First Plus, only the Max. So you're probably thinking, this is a stupid question. Is adaptive cruise control on the ID3 First better than autopilot on the Model 3 Tesla? Look, the sun's in my eyes. Um, because obviously it's a stupid question because, you know, Tesla software is so much better than Volkswagen software. Everybody knows that. I mean, people keep telling us that on the internet every day. You know, Tesla's from Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley know how to do software. The Germans don't know how to do software. Nobody else knows how to do software. You know, it's Tesla's the best. But this is a myth that people keep repeating and they keep repeating and they keep repeating and it becomes true. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy a Tesla. I think the Tesla Model 3 is an absolute wonderful car. But I absolutely believe it is a myth that the Tesla Model 3 autopilot is better than adaptive cruise control on this car. And I'm going to tell you why. You may think I'm absolutely crazy. I'm absolutely talking bonkers. But I honestly believe the adaptive cruise control on this car is so much better than autopilot on the Tesla Model 3. Another thing I really hated with autopilot on the Tesla Model 3 was that when it was on autopilot and it was steering me around the bends, um, I had my hands on the steering wheel at all times. And it kept beeping, it kept making noises at me, saying I had to turn the steering wheel slightly every 30 seconds or so. So that's what I did. I, absolutely, I actually turned the steering wheel slightly. And when I was turning the steering wheel slightly, I overdid it because it has to be a very slight movement, you know, a very slight movement like this. And I, if you overdo it, autopilot suddenly turns off, it starts beeping at you, suddenly you're in control, suddenly you're going over the lines, you know, you're doing 120 kilometers on the motorway, and, and it's just awful every 30 seconds, even if your hands on the steering wheel, it doesn't detect, you've got your hands on the steering wheel, it needs you to actually move the steering wheel slightly, and if you don't move it slightly enough, if you move it slightly too much, autopilot disengages, it's so stressful. Autopilot is such a stressful situation, System. every 30 seconds it's beeping at you move your hands on the steering wheel lane keep assist is really nice because when you go over the lines it pulls you back in nicely um, it doesn't make a lot of beeping noise and stuff if you really go over the lines a lot um, it will start to beep at you and make noises but I've only seen it do that on one road I was on where it was very thin road and there wasn't really an edge and I was naturally naturally trying to drive in the middle but everywhere else you just feel the steering wheel pulling slightly to keep you in the lane like now it's pulling me slightly it's not making any noise it's keeping me nicely in the night lane it's working perfectly lane assist um, in most cases in some cases it goes a bit haywire on roads like this B mode makes absolutely perfect sense on these small country lanes. When I take my foot off to accelerator, it slows down, and that's just perfect for these bendy roads along here. Absolutely perfect. Um, so, sorry, I was completely wrong. B mode on this kind of road makes perfect sense. Absolutely perfect sense. I was wrong yesterday. I said you should only keep it in D mode. D mode makes perfect sense for most normal roads, but for country lanes like this, where we accelerate up here quickly, there's a bend. So I lift my foot off and B mode puts it into regeneration, as you can see there. And I go around the corner at the speed and I just put my foot uh, down now to accelerate around the corner as you should. So here, this makes so much more sense than using D mode 
So I apologize if I said you should never use B mode, but thanks, people on the internet today have been telling me B mode is great for country lanes, and they're absolutely right, I was wrong, but I'm learning something new about the ID3 every day. And this is the first time I've actually driven the ID3 on country lanes somewhere like this. Take my foot off the accelerator, slowing down, speed up again now. As you can see, we're slowing down again. Um, and going around here perfectly. My foot hasn't touched the brake once. So we're going around nicely these, these, these country lanes. Phenomenal. Speed up a bit here. See, speed up. Lift off. Um, my foot, so we're regenerating. So I don't know, I think there's a bend here. I don't know what's around the corner. And I definitely wouldn't want to uh, spin off the road here. <laughs> we're quite high up here. Let's go again, foot off the de accelerate in B mode to get round this corner. Yeah, yeah, B, B mode here makes perfect sense. And to be honest, it's so much easier to drive this than the petrol car around here, because in the petrol car, it has to be changing down gear, up there, changing down gear. And I'm, and, and I'm not braking to go around the corners. This is perfect. So you speed up a bit here, let the car regenerate, put the foot on the accelerator, regenerate a bit more before I get to this corner. Go around the corner nicely. Here we are, go around the corner nicely. Accelerate out the corner, accelerate again. So much fun. This car on these roads is brilliant. So much fun. Unbelievable. Like there's a bend coming up. I'm gonna de-accelerate. De get into the bend, de-accelerate, de-accelerate in B mode. Accelerate again, yeah. B mode is absolutely wonderful on this road. However, it doesn't take away what I said about D-Mode. Most people don't use D-Mode. They don't know how it works on the ID3, so see my previous video to see how it works. And D-Mode makes perfect sense when you're on normal national roads, normal roads. But on country lanes like this, you know, B-Mode is what you want when there's lots of bends and curves. And uh, probably want B-Mode as well when you're going downhill. Let's accelerate here because we're going up a hill. But this guy's fabulous, 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 fabulous. It holds the road so well. It's so solid. I don't think I've driven such a good car ever for holding the road. It's fabulous. Oh, the line adjust. The line assist was just keeping me a little bit in the line there, working perfectly, just pulling me. We didn't hear any of those harsh beeps or nasty sounds. No, it's just working perfectly. Line assist. I really enjoy line assist be amazing to see what Travel Assist can do in the ID3 Max because I think that's be something really special because even the ID3 base for driver assistance is really good even with line assist here we get higher and higher you can see at the Atlantic down there in the beaches I wonder if you can turn my head but I have to look in front of me now actually I love to do this route on my bicycle I'm always cycling up here cycling down here this is really great for a bicycle so somebody on the internet actually asked me what happens in D mode when you go down a hill. Does it keep rolling and increase its speed? So you have to try this on a steep hill or does it regenerate and keep the speed? So imagine we're going down the hill at 80 kilometers an hour. Does it actually regenerate and keep at 80 kilometers an hour? Or does it keep increasing to 90, 100 kilometers an hour? So let's put it in D mode because as we're at the top of the hill now, uh, you see, lane assist is telling me to keep in the lane because I was talking and I wasn't in the lane properly. So sometimes it does bug you, but you have to be out the lane a while for it to do that. And now it's pulling me nicely on the steering wheel, keeping me inside the lane. Um, so we're going to try this now because we're at the top of the hill now and we're about to go down the hill in a minute. And there's actually a steep part to go down the hill. So we're going to see if it actually regenerates in D mode or if it actually just keeps increasing the speed, increasing the speed, like it's in neutral or something, going down a steep hill. As you can see, we're very high up. So I hope you're enjoying the Portuguese countryside, I am. And I'm enjoying it even more in this ID3 first. Absolutely phenomenal here. So here we've got a bit of a downhill, let's see. My foot's off the accelerating drive mode, 58. Ah, it is regening a little bit, you see there? It's regening a little bit, but the speed is increasing, 64. I'm going to put my brake on now to slow down around the corner. So there was one part to try. We've got to steep a bit in the moment, a bit longer, where we can test it more. Here we go then. So I'm going to speed up a bit here. Steep downhill, let go of the accelerator. The speed is going up, it's doing a little bit of regeneration, about seven kilowatts. We're speeding up, we're speeding up, we're speeding up, 
Only a little bit of a um, generation. We keep speeding up. So there's a little bit of ex generation, but we keep speeding up. So it's almost like being in neutral. Very little bit of acceleration. I had to actually brake there. So I was actually braking where you saw the car slowing down. So I um, thought we were going down a bit too quickly for my liking. Let's try again here. We're going down here 54. The car's speeding up. Only a very small amount of regeneration in D mode. Speeding up. Speeding up, a bit of regeneration, only 8 kilowatt hours, you can see there the green line, it's speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, only a little bit of regeneration down here. I'm going to apply the brake now because there's a corner coming up. So I'm applying, applying the brake now. So basically it's almost like being in neutral with a little bit of uh, regeneration. So there's the answer, so it will keep speeding up, probably it speeds up, up to 90 kilometers an hour but I'm not too happy about doing 90 kilometers an hour down here I'm braking now to slow myself down so it does speed up downhills little bit of regeneration so there's your answer let us see how adaptive cruise control works on the ID3 first so I've actually said adaptive cruise control now we're going for a 50 zone it's telling me it's 50 zone there and as you can see this green line here is that when it detects a car up ahead it won't let us get any closer than this green line to that car ahead. Um, you can change the green line so you can set it to your own preference uh, if you want to be further away or closer. Now I think we're just about to come out to the 50 zone and we have it's automatically detected it's a 90 zone it's automatically increasing the speed to 90. Around the bend it's not increasing it too quickly because there's a bend. Let's go around the bend bend detected so it's actually detected the bend and it actually automatically decreased it to 65 kilometers an hour now you can see there's a car up ahead there so it's seeing where the car is it's saying there's a bend up ahead so it's actually automatically decreasing it to 55 kilometers an hour so this actually gives you a lot of confidence in the system because it's giving me messages clear messages telling me exactly what it's doing and why it's doing it and it's automatically setting the speed to 50 kilometers an hour, 90 kilometers an hour, and it's also making sure we're not too close to the car ahead. So now it's saying it's 50 kilometers an hour, so we're slowing down. Adaptive cruise control, so perfect. So we're going through the 50 kilometer hour zone now. There's a couple of times where it has told me a speed limit where it's not correct and it's slowed down, but that's easy to resolve. You just put your foot on the accelerator. Hopefully that'll be improved with the software update and better navigation information. But sometimes that happens, but it happens to me like two or three times on a um, 300 kilometer trip. So I wouldn't say it's something that's um, too much of a problem. So I think you can see a lot of sun. There's no cars in front of me now. So we're just going along at 50 kilometers an hour, um, watching out for pedestrians and things. And now you see there's parked cars ahead. Let's see how it handles this. It's going to like 50. Does it recognize them? Put my foot over the brake just in case it doesn't. Slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. I didn't do anything and it stopped. It's brought me, that screws of control, has brought, brought me to a stop. ACC is ready to start it saying. So let's just wait and see. So that's brought me to a complete stop. I haven't touched any pedal. Had my foot over the brake pedal because I wasn't sure how the system was going to work. Let's see, will it start? No, I have to put my foot on the accelerator, so it doesn't start on its own. But this is just the basic version of the ID3 first. This isn't travel assist like the Max has got. But ACC, just by putting my foot on the accelerator, has automatically started again. So just put my foot slightly on the accelerator and it automatic and ACC is working again. And then it's automatically set to 50 because it's a 50 zone. So all I had to do is press the accelerator slightly. I didn't have to set um, adaptive cruise control again. So it's not too difficult. This car in front stopping, we're slowing down. It's speeding up again. And here now to a roundabout. So we're slowing down. My foot hasn't gone on the pedal yet. We're going around the roundabout. Go around the roundabout. You see all adaptive cruise control. My foot never went on any of the pedals at any time. So we went round the roundabout at a nice speed um, and then we sped up again. So as you can see here, adaptive cruise control is working perfectly and it's so comforting. I did just have my foot over the brake pedal slightly in case somebody was coming around the roundabout. So I mean, you have to be aware and careful. Um, and I'm not fully used to this system, 
but it seems to be working very well at the moment and it's such a relaxing drive. So the best thing with this system, it gives us all the information here. It tells us when there's a bend coming up, why it's slowing down. It tells us um, when there's speed limits, when it's increasing the speed, when it's decreasing the speed. It shows us here, just in front of our eyes, where the cars are. It shows us the distance. And this is absolutely brilliant because it gives you 100% confidence in the assisted driving systems of this ID3 first. And that's where the Tesla Model 3 absolutely failed. It showed you information here with cars, but it's not in front of your eyes. It was confusing. I didn't know why the system was doing things. And the messages that came up were extremely small and I couldn't see them. Whereas with the ID3 first, as you've seen here, the messages are big, they come up, give you lots of warning, gives you 100% confidence in the driving assistance of this car. I'm not saying the autopilot's bad, I'm not saying the autopilot doesn't work, but it gives you no confidence, there's no user feedback, and that's where Volkswagen have absolutely nailed this software, particularly here, gives you the user feedback, the driving assistance is wonderful, even in this base model, this does not have travel assist like the ID3 First Max. This is a base model, and even so, as you can see, it's working absolutely perfectly, and it's given us all the information we need. That's why I honestly believe this system here is better than autopilot in a Tesla, because it's telling you exactly what it's doing and why it's doing it. And that's why I feel the autopilot is a fail, because it's not giving you that information. See, it's still a 50 zone here. I think we're going to a 90 zone in a minute. Um, and that's why I have so much more confidence in this Volkswagen driving assistance system. Now, people keep saying there's a myth going around that Tesla has the best software. It's a myth because it doesn't. Now, here you see we're coming to the end of the 50 kilometer zone. Let's see if it speeds up. You see, 90 kilometers de detected, it's saying there. We're speeding up to 90 kilometers an hour. There's nobody in our way for the moment. You see, we've speeded up to 90 kilometers an hour. I haven't done anything. I haven't touched the, the, I haven't touched the brake or the accelerator in such a long time. It's just incredible. And we've gone through towns, gone round a roundabout, and now um, we've come up to this 90 zone. Incredible. Now, as you can see, as we go at 90, I believe the other car in front of us is going slower. So let's see. You can see there the blue car in front of us. When we get to the green line, the car's slowing down. It's slowing down because it's detected this car. So now we just follow this car at 70 kilometers an hour. And actually, we've gone to a 70 kilometer zone just here. And we're under 70, so that's okay. Um, see, 70 detected. So it's detected 70, we're under 70. Now we're coming into 50 zone. 50 detected ahead so it's slowing down to 50 it's slowing down to 50 I'm not doing anything this is so easy so easy it's ridiculous just ridiculous how easy it is the adaptive cruise control in the ID3 first and how good it is I mean it's really good there's 70 there I don't know if it detected that yes it detected the 70 now we're going back up to 70 you see it's just it's just phenomenal just phenomenal this is just how he easy it is to drive now this car here is slowing down in front of me so 50 detected, the car's stopping, we're stopping, you see, we're sloppy, we're slowing down a lot. My foot hasn't touched the pedal and we're speeding up again. Now there's traffic light here, will it slow down? Doesn't have to because it turned to green. And now the car stopped in its own, I've done nothing, I've touched not a single pedal. And it stopped down to zero, it says ACC is ready to start, so it completely stopped, my foot hasn't stopped pedal. Oh, I didn't touch the pedal then, it's automatically doing it this time, this time it's doing it on its own. I haven't touched any pedal, it's automatically doing it on its own. I think it's a timing thing. If it's stopped there for a long time, then you'll have to hit the accelerator. If it's just a short time like that, you don't have to hit the accelerator, it's just doing it on its own. Look, it's, it's, it's bloody brilliant this is, bloody brilliant. So let me just add my conclusion. I definitely think the assisted driving systems on the Volkswagen ID3 first are better than autopilot on the Tesla. Just because it gives you so much more confidence and it tells you exactly what it's doing and why it's doing it. And that to me is really lacking on autopilot on the Tesla. Um, I just think Volkswagen have absolutely nailed this system. It's perfect and it's working really, really well. And it will only get better with more software updates.
As you can see, I've answered two questions that were given to me on my YouTube channel. So if you ask me questions, I will try and come out in the car and answer those questions for you and put them into a video so you can see. So I'm really trying my best here. I'm trying to go above and beyond most electric car reviewers. So if you want to know more about the ID3, please subscribe to my channel. Now I've currently got 600 su subscribers or more. Let's see if we can get it up to a thousand subscribers subscribers because a thousand subscribers would absolutely be brilliant for me be absolutely brilliant um, and if you do have any questions please leave them below and if you have any comments because I learn a lot from your comments as well not just not just from your questions I don't know everything about the ID3 I don't pretend to um, I really learn from your comments and I really appreciate you guys leaving comments so please again click subscribe thank you for watching this episode of EV Journey. I hope you've enjoyed it. I doubt you've enjoyed it as much as I have um, driving around these country lanes in the ID3 first. It's absolutely phenomenal, this car, absolutely phenomenal. Thank you again and bye.